The top stories tonight in Y News. The government's economic managers to work on how to further reopen the Philippine economy amid the rejected proposal to place the country under modified general community quarantine. The Senate approves on final reading the proposed COVID-19 Vaccination Program Act of 2021, which seeks to expedite the procurement of vaccines and to establish a national indemnity fund. The Philippines is in talks with the United Kingdom and Germany to provide vaccines for OFWs in exchange for the deployment of more Filipino healthcare workers. Typhoon O'Ring leaves one person dead and two missing in the Caraga region. Security experts stumped as a new malware was found on 30,000 maps worldwide. And NASA's Perseverance rover captures wind gusts from Mars. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, February 23, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William P. First in the news. The government's economic managers will reassess the recommendation to place the entire country under modified general community quarantine or MGCQ. This after President Rodrigo Duterte rejected the proposal until the country's COVID-19 vaccination program has started. The chief executive says he does not blame anyone for the delayed arrival of COVID-19 vaccines. Rosalie Cons explains to us this story live. Yes, Rosalie. Arlene, there is time for everything. This is why President Rodrigo Duterte deferred the recommendation of the Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 to place the entire country under the list strict community quarantine next month. The chief executive wants to have the vaccination roll out first before easing the quarantine restrictions. The economic managers of the Duterte administration will work on how to further reopen the economy even if some areas are still under general community quarantine or GCQ. The government will reassess its recommendation to place the entire country under modified general community quarantine or MGCQ next month. We'll monitor the situation on the ground uh, pag nagkaroon na ng rollout ng vaccination program. And uh, if makita naman natin na maganda yung pag-rollout, uh, then uh, perhaps we can again try um, to uh, uh, ask the President uh, kung ano yung kanyang magiging um, uh, sentiment with regard to uh, shifting again to MGCQ. The effectivity of the community quarantine in various parts of the country is for the whole month. Meanwhile, President Duterte is not blaming anyone in the government over the delay of COVID-19 vaccines in the country. According to Secretary Carlo Nograles, it is within the responsibility of the vaccine manufacturers to ship the vaccine supplies, especially after the government has complied with all the requirements. Alam mo, si Pangulo also understands na we are at the receiving end no, of these vaccines. Uh, as much as we want to and as, as, uh, as practicable as possible, ginagawa naman po natin ang lahat ng kinakailangan natin based on the requirements being asked of us. But at the end of the day, it's really uh, the vaccine manufacturer's um, obligation, responsibility to ship it 
to us at the time that was uh, promised. No. Arlene, the scheduled arrival of the 600,000 doses of Chinese donated Sinovac vaccines last February 23 was delayed and the Food and Drug Administration or FDA has only approved its emergency use authorization or the emergency, emergency use of the vaccines yesterday. The government still hopes to start its inoculation program within the month of February or in the first week of March. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Rosa Likos, reporting live. The Senate has approved on third reading the proposed measure seeking to expedite the country's purchase of COVID-19 vaccines. 22 senators voted in favor of the measure with no negative votes and no abstention. Senate Bill No. 2507 or the COVID-19 Vaccination Program Act will allow local government units to make advance payments to vaccine manufacturers and to purchase for up to 75% of their target population for the vaccination. A COVID-19 National Vaccine Indemnity Fund will also be created to be administered by the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. An additional 500 million pesos will be allocated to be sourced from the contingent fund under the national budget. The bill will also exempt the purchase and administration of the vaccines from import duties and other taxes while the country is still under the state of emergency. A vaccine card will also be issued to inoculated individuals. According to Senate Majority Leader Miguel Zubiri, they will talk to their House counterparts to adopt the Senate version so that there is no need to convene a bicameral conference committee. The House of Representatives passed their own version of the bill last night. The two measures were certified as urgent by President Duterte last week. Meanwhile, all military personnel and employees of the Department of National Defense will receive the COVID-19 vaccines from Sinovac donated by China. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. 100,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines from Sinovac will be allocated for the employees and military personnel of the Department of National Defense. The vaccines were donated by China through Chinese Defense Minister Wei Feng He. In a statement, Defense Spokesperson Arsenio Andolong said, The vaccines will be administered to all the people who are working in the DND including their family members. Other civilian bureaus of the DND who will receive the vaccines are the Office of Civil Defense, Government Arsenal, National Defense College of the Philippines, the Philippines Veterans Affairs Office, as well as the civilian employees of the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP. Meanwhile, Andulong said, the uniformed personnel under the AFP will be inoculated under a different vaccine rollout plan. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, clarifies that healthcare workers can still choose to take the Sinovac Biotech's COVID-19 vaccine if they want to. This despite the recommendation for use on clinically healthy mem members of the community. Joanna Nano tells us why. Amid criticisms on the low efficacy rate of Sinovac vaccines among healthcare workers that are usually exposed to COVID-19 patients, the Food and Drug Administration clarifies that healthcare workers who are willing to get inoculated with China-made Sinovac vaccines are still allowed to do so, as the government do not prohibit them to take the vaccine. FDA Director General Undersecretary Eric Domingo explains that based on the 50.4% efficacy rate of Sinovac that was recorded in a clinical trial for health workers in Brazil, experts are just giving the recommend Sinovac is not suited for medical workers that are commonly exposed to COVID-19 patients. Yusek Domingo also explains the 65.3 to 91.2 percent efficacy rate of Sinovac may apply to healthcare workers who do not have a direct contact with COVID-19 patients and if they belong to the age group of 18 to 59 years old. The recommendation lamang naman yun. Kung ibawa ayaw niya nang hintayin yung ibang bakuna, no? And then willing naman siya to take a vaccine 
ka na knowing na ang possible efficacy nito sa kung sa, sa sa personal situation mo is 50% and you'd rather take it now than take another one two months from now kung kailan darating yung ibang bakuna then pwede naman yon hindi naman siya contraindication no hindi naman namin siya pinagbabawal na gamitin Yusek Domingo adds why the efficacy rate of the vaccine is decreasing to people who are exposed to COVID-19 patients. Eh, ang mga tao, iba-iba naman ang situation natin. No? Iba-iba rin naman yung ating susceptibility at saka iba-iba yung exposure natin. So depending on our situation, maaaring mas ma- bumaba, ang, ano, no? bumaba ang efficacy ng isang vaccine kung tayo ay nandun sa situation na talagang nasa harap natin araw-araw yung COVID virus and the exposure is continuous and at high levels no so maari kahit mabakunahan ka na alimbawa ng first dose pero hindi ka pa nakaka-mount ng enough response to ward off the ano the infection maari kang ma-infect kasi nga masyadong regular yung iyong ano no yung iyong exposure to the covid-19 virus The FDA pointed out that although Sinovac has yet to publish the data and information of the results on the third phase of their clinical trial, FDA assures that there is enough basis for its efficacy and safety and this is the reason why they are granted with an emergency use authorization. As Sinovac is yet to finish its clinical trial, FDA cited that the provisions of their EUA in the country can still be revised and expanded for the people who can be inoculated by the COVID-19 vaccine. Joan Nano UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The United Kingdom and Germany appealed to the Philippine government to send more Filipino health workers abroad. But the two countries must provide vaccines in, in exchange for the deployment. Ray Palayo explains why. The coronavirus disease pandemic has increased the demand for health workers all over the world. In the Philippines, the national government put in place a deployment cap of 5,000 health workers for 2021 to make sure that the country will have a sufficient number in case the COVID-19 infection worsens. But the governments of the United Kingdom and Germany appealed to the Philippines to deploy more health workers given that the country is one of the top exporters of this field and expertise. According to the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, There is an ongoing negotiation on this request. The Philippine government, however, has several conditions before approving the matter. One is that the requesting countries, in return, should give the Philippines COVID-19 vaccines. Yung nire-request ni Secretary Bello ay para sa ating mga OFWs. Uh, so ito yung mga OFWs na na-repatriate na dito at uh, including yung mga OFWs din na papaalis. The official said there are around 600,000 overseas Filipino workers or OFWs who were repatriated and some of them were redeployed. Karamihan sa mga bansa ngayon na kumukuha ng workers, gusto na nila may vaccine na yung kanilang uh, kukunin na ano na workers. And darating din yung panahon baka hindi na sila kukuha pag walang uh, pag hindi pa nabibigyan ng ano ng vaccine. The other conditions is the renegotiation for labor agreement in favor of OFWs in the said countries. Dole said that the matter is now on the ministerial level and receiving a possible response. But the Filipino Nurses United seems offended with the way the government is treating the country's nurses. The Philippine Nurses Association, on the other hand, supports the government on the matter, but as for the number, There should be a careful study first as to how many nurses will be allowed to leave. Kung gaga, manggagaling na sa government at uh, merong benefit ng Pilipinas with that, I think we should welcome yung idea. But uh, we should make sure sana na may maiiwan dito sa Pilipinas to take care of our people. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The total number of coronavirus disease cases in the country rose to 564,865 today. This after the Department of Health reported 1,414 new COVID-19 cases. The latest case bulletin of the Health Department also shows 72 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 522,941. Total deaths is now at 12,107 with 16 new deaths. 
According to DOH, eight labs were not able to submit their data to the COVID-19 document repository system on Feb 22, 2021. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. One person was reported dead while two others are missing in Caraga region due to the onslaught of Auring. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte will visit the residents affected by the typhoon. JP Nunez reports. Tropical Storm Auring left tens of thousands affected in its aftermath. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council has recorded one fatality and two missing in the Caraga region. The NDRRMC has not yet disclosed full details surrounding the casualties. We have uh, preliminary information on the casualties. Meron daw tayong isang kababayan dyan sa Karaga na kasabi at uh, dalawang uh, uh, missing din sa Karaga. Uh, although we received another report na instead of two, pakaapat itong missing na ito. At uh, we also have uh, reports of two injured uh, persons. The NDRRMC has recorded a total of 18,996 families or 69,682 individuals affected by the typhoon in Region 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and Caraga. Ang pinaka-focus ngayon is makabalik na yung mga tao sa kanila mga bahay, pag lalo na pag pumupa na yung baha, tapos makaresume na kaagad sila sa mga normal nila na daily day-to-day -day activity. President Rodrigo Duterte is set to visit areas affected by the typhoon. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles in an online briefing said the President wants to see firsthand the damage wrought by our ring and the situation of displaced residents. Duterte will visit the affected areas in the Caraga region accompanied by several members of the cabinet. Nograles reported that financial aid has already been given to the residents. He further assured that additional relief assistance will also be provided. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the country can expect an improved weather condition as the low pressure area or LPA, formerly Tropical Depression Auring, has already dissipated. According to Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA, the prevailing weather system in the country, the tail end of a frontal system, is affecting the eastern section of northern Luzon. Moderate to heavy rains will be experienced over the eastern portions of Isabela and mainland Cagayan. Meanwhile, light to moderate with at times heavy rains may be felt over Aurora, northern portion of Quezon and the rest of Cagayan Valley. Possible isolated flash floods and landslides may occur during heavy rainfall, especially in areas that are highly susceptible to these hazards. A Senate panel has commenced its hearing on proposed bills seeking to regulate the use of firecrackers and pyrotechnic devices in the country. Meanwhile, a senator has expressed disappointment over the lack of roadmap for the firecracker manufacturing industry, especially to backyard and small-time producers. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. The Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs conducted its hearing today on the proposed bills seeking to impose stricter regulation on the use of firecrackers in the country. The proposed measures would amend the 28-year-old law, which regulates the sale, manufacture, distribution, and use of firecrackers and pyrotechnic devices. The Senate panel's chairperson, Senator Ronald De La Rosa, clarified that there are no bills seeking for a total ban. The Department of Trade and Industry is also not in favor of a total firecracker ban. The agency is keen on regulating the use of firecrackers and fireworks in designated areas similar to the executive order of President Rodrigo Duterte. The DTI noted that there are only six manufacturers nationwide who are fully licensed by the agency and pass the Philippine standards. However, the PNP Fireworks and Explosives Office said they have granted licenses to 35 manufacturers. We will need to harmonize also the permitting issued uh, or made by the DTI and the FEO. Mr. Chair, I understand that they license 
uh, retailers also, but maybe uh, we can ask them to license only those selling products that are certified um, by the DTI. Dapat kayo PNP, yung standards na yun, sundin niyo yun. Y yes, Mr. Kayo issue ng issue ng permit na outside those standards. But it was not uh, written in the IRR, sir, na if you do not if you do not pass the uh, Philippine standard, you can uh, have the license, sir. Alam nyo, babalik naman tayo sa IRR. In the absence of the IRR, you stick to the law. Meanwhile, Senator Joel Villanueva expressed disappointment after the DTI admitted that there was no roadmap created yet for the firecracker industry. This, as Senator Sherwin Getzalian pointed out the need for an alternative livelihood for backyard firecracker producers who would be affected by the proposed regulation. Villanueva, who sailed in Bulacan, also did not agree with the DTI's estimate that there were at least 30 backyard firecracker producers in the country. Baka isang barangay lang ho sa Bukawi yun eh. Uh, marami ho talaga, marami talaga uh, na maliliit na will be affected. And a lot of them are, are, are willing to, to give it up as long as there, are, uh, there would be available opportunities for them. We also need to make sure that they transition out into something more safe or more stable in terms of livelihood. We don't want a scenario wherein they will go underground. Well, they're, they're, they're actually open underground, no? But uh, with this bill, they might go underground, underground. The senator also lamented the failure of the Bureau of Customs to provide data on the entry of smuggled firecrackers in the country, which is prohibited under the law. In my own personal point of view, the past five years, ang mas maraming binebenta na paputok ay mga imported products. Kaya, tignan natin, Ito bang RA 7183, may magagawa po tayo. Marami pa rin nagkakalat doon sa mga natitinda sa mga palengke. So, ibig sabihin, mas marami nagkakalusot kaysa nahuhuli. So, it, it, it takes a second hard look yung enforcement natin. The committee is set to hold another round of hearing on March 9. Jorge Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Petitioners challenging the constitutionality of Republic Act 11479 or the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020 have asked the Supreme Court to issue a temporary restraining order stopping the implementation of the controversial legislation. Dante Amento tells us why. A new joint motion is filed by 37 petitioners against the anti-terrorism law at the Supreme Court yesterday. This is reiterating the prayer for a temporary restraining order or TRO against the law until a final disposition of consolidated petitions on its merits. This is with respect to the allegedly serious violations against human rights such as freedom of speech and expression, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly among others. Threats from NTF LCAC and its spokesperson, Lt. Gerald Antonio Parlade Jr. against the petitioners, his statement condemning a media reporter and relentless red tagging claim on many of the petitioners like the National Union of People's Lawyer or NUPL calling them as defenders of the new People's Army. Chief Justice Justado Peralta had recently said that they denied the first motion for TRO, but because there is a new allegation by the petitioners, Peralta suggested them to make it in writing. Subsequently, the Office of the Solicitor General or Solgen will also be given 10 days to comment or object the prayer for TRO. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Medical experts and mayors in the National Capital Region give all-out support to President Rodrigo Duterte's decision to keep the region under general community quarantine or GCQ classification unless the COVID-19 vaccination program has been rolled out. Janice Inhenta will tell us why. Although the plan to place the country under modified general community quarantine could help build the economy, Metro Manila mayors and medical experts expressed their worries that this may worsen the health crisis we are now facing. Medical experts from the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases said 
that the ship to MGCQ will only be possible if the public will religiously follow the minimum health protocol set by the government. I know that lockdown is hard, but I just feel that the minute we try to relax the, the, the lockdowns or the, the quarantines, um, it will somehow translate to people thinking that everything is well. And I fear that they will start um, not minding wearing the mask, not minding wearing the shield, not minding the physical distancing. Based on previous experience, uh, I know that, you know, we're not very good at self-regulation. So, is that going to change once we move to MGCQ? I, I think, you know, that's a question every Filipino should answer. MMDA Chairman Ben Hur Abalu said, Local chief executives in the NCR would rally behind the president, even if most of them have voted in favor of the proposal to put the region under modified GCQ in March to help revive the country's economy. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte and San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora lauded President Rodrigo Duterte's decision to keep the national capital region under general community quarantine. They added that the local government was prepared if the president would declare a nationwide MGCQ. For Marikina City Mayor Marcy Chidoro, stricter health protocols must be implemented to reduce the number of COVID-19 cases in the country. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Tourism, or DOT, has expressed its support for the move of the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, to streamline the travel procedures and requirements being imposed by local government units, or LGU. In a statement, Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat said her department has long been adv advocating for the simplification of travel requirement, as this is critical in making domestic tourism work. Among the common travel requirements being imposed by the LGUs are the medical certificate, other types of pre-travel or test on arrival COVID tests and quarantine. The DOT said at the destinations, some rules that need to be standardized are those that relate to RT-PCR for children or infant, rooming or capacity limits, and age restrictions vis-a-vis -vis inter- and intra-regional movement of domestic tourists. The Department of the Interior and Local Government says some local travel requirements are no longer relevant. However, governors across the country still want to require COVID-19 tests in local travel. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why live. Asher, go ahead. The Department of the Interior and Local Government Under Secretary Epimako Densing explains that travel authorities and local health certificates have already become obsolete as COVID-19 contraction is still potential despite its requirement. This as the DILG plans to recommend to the Interagency Task Force on the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases the, uh, to remove some of the required documents in domestic traveling. Parang hindi na siya relevant sa magbabiyahe. Kasi kahit dalagala niya yun, pwede pa naman siyang, pwede posible pa naman siya maging carrier. Especially kung nakuha niya yun, yung uh, certification days before the travel. Yusek then seeing further explains that the focus of the Philippine National Police on Peace and Order has been partly diverted to processing of travel authority with more than 1.5 billion of them issued across the country. The ILG also aims to streamline travel requirements to provide convenience to travelers. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat, meanwhile, expressed the DOT support to DILG's recommenda recommendation, which will help boost domestic tourism as the country is challenged in reviving the economy. The DILG plans to impose instead clinical assessment of travelers in terminals of, of bus, ship ports, and airports from point of origin and destination. Clinical assessment includes temperature and other medical checkup to determine if one carries the virus instead of undergoing COVID-19 testing that the DILG is looking to also remove. The League of the Provinces in the Philippines agrees that the other documents, particularly the local health certificate, 
should no longer be required as they have observed some barangay personnel issuing the document without checking if the requesting travelers did undergo quarantine procedure. But LPP President Governor Presbitero Velasco said there are governors who still want to require at least the negative COVID-19 test result for travelers. There are some LGU who want to have an antigen test or an PCR test. They have molecular laboratory. Sila. So, that's what we said. And even those government officials or other apor. Hindi require naman namin na at least magpa-PCR test muna sila at kunin yung certificate bago pumasok sa LGU of destination. The World Health Organization also said that easing travel restrictions should be carefully decided. I think uh, it needs to be very carefully calibrated on where um, there is value for uh, removing the requirement for testing. If, if you are traveling from an uh, area with very low COVID to another area with very low COVID, maybe there is an opportunity to relax the need for testing. But that is uh, that has to be very carefully assessed and a decision made because, uh, as you know, the process is uh, a risk-based process that needs to be carefully evaluated frequently. It's Check out the DILG plans to submit, uh, submit its recommendation to the IATF on Thursday. There go. Thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. Protesters in Myanmar are staging a general strike calling for restoration of democracy three weeks at a military coup. Maybe and Dog will give us more details live. May? Staff businesses are shutting their doors as thousands of protesters gathered in cities and towns across Myanmar, ignoring the country's military warning of further loss of life. Protesters have gathered after supporters of the civil disobedience movement, a loosely organized group leading the resistance, called for Myanmar's people to unite on Monday for a 2-5 or a spring revolution. Thousands gathered in Myanmar's largest city, Yangon, under the heat, chanting phrases like release all detained leaders and don't go to the office break away. Masses have also gathered in the second largest city of Mandalay, Naypyida, and in various towns across the country. The military, locally known as Tatmada, warned against the general strike on Sunday on state television broadcaster MRTV. The on-screen text in English stating that these protesters are encouraging people, especially emotional youth, towards loss of life. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also called on the Myanmar military to stop the repression immediately and that coups have no place in our modern world. UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Myanmar, Tom Andrews, also said a warning to the junta their actions are being recorded and that they will be held accountable. Steph? Maeve, has the military made more arrests despite the rallies and what is the current count of the people detained by Myanmar's military? Yes, Steph, they made more arrests on Sunday night. A popular actor named Lumen, who apparently posted a video condemning the coup, was taken from his home. A member of parliament, Mind Aw, was also among those who were detained. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, or AAPP, 640 people have been detained since the coup began, while 594 remain in detention. Back to you, Steph. Thank you, Mavian Dog, reporting live. Security researchers have spotted a new malware operation targeting Mac devices that has silently infected some 30,000 units, including those with Apple's latest M1 chip technology. Marvi Delphine will give us the details live. Marvi? the new malware they named Silver Sparrow and warns that this is a reasonably serious threat given its cutting-edge display of sophistication, global reach, and quick payload potential. 
This is the second malware strain that can run on Apple's latest M1 chip architectures after the first was discovered just four days before. According to Red Canary's joint analysis with Malwarebytes and VMware Carbon Black documented as a blog post, almost 30,000 detections have been found throughout the world, with concentrations in North America and Western Europe. Despite the high number of infections, details about the malware's distribution and mechanism are still scarce, and it is unclear if Silver Sparrow was hidden inside malicious ads, pirated applications, or fake Adobe Flash updates. The purpose of the malware remains unknown, and its final goal is yet to be determined. But what detection engineers have observed so far is that Silver Sparrow uses JavaScript for execution, and and once it successfully infects a system, two messages popped up. The words hello world for those with Intel chips and you did it for M1 Max. The malware scripts then check on a server every hour and just waits for new commands from its operators. During the time security experts were looking into its inner activities, commands never arrived. So there is a possibility that the malware is even capable of knowing that researchers are analyzing its behavior and is simply avoiding delivering its second stage attack to these systems. Patrick Wardle, a Mac OS security expert, notes that considering how widespread the incident is, this instance might just be the tip of the iceberg. The Red Canary report has detailed some indicators of compromise and has recommended using a reputable antivirus software or anti-malware program as an added security layer to the existing protections that Apple builds into its operating system. While Apple, on the other hand, has revoked the certificates of the developer accounts used to sign the packages, which prevents attacks to any additional Mac users. Steph? All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. Women in Saudi Arabia are now allowed to hold different positions in the military. Charisse Lombowin reports why live. Therese? F as part of the Kingdom's Ambition 2030 project of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to provide equal opportunities for everyone, women are now given opportunity to join the Saudi Arabian Army, Royal Saudi Air Defense, Royal Saudi Navy, Royal Saudi Strategic Missile Force, and Armed Forces Medical Services. Women who are eligible to apply to these positions are those between 21 to 40 years old, with a minimum height of 155 centimeters, must at least have high school education, with no criminal record, and not married to a non-Saudi citizen. However, their positions have been restricted to administrative and technical support sections. Apart from military, women are also given more opportunities in other sectors, such as in civil service, where Saudi Arabia witnessed the female workforce increase 25 times within the last decade. The kingdom currently implements its guardianship system, wherein women are considered as legal minors, giving them certain restrictions without obtaining permission from their male guardian, who can either be the father, husband, and in some cases, the son. Steph? Thank you, Charisse, for that report. Experts have identified a super plant which can absorb more air pollution in roads with heavy traffic compared to other shrubs. Early Briones will tell us why. Bushy hairy lip cotton yester franchetta is a super plant. This plant, mostly found in the United Kingdom, can help soak up pollution. On roads with heavy traffic, the denser hairy-leaved cotton yester was at least 20% more effective decreasing the levels of pollution compared with other shrubs, according to the Royal Horticultural Society or RHS. Dr. Tihana Blanusa, principal from the RHS, said that when highly used in city roads which experience more traffic, have plants and species that have larger canopies and textured leaves, they are seen to be more effective in cleaning pollutants. They identified that in a week, a meter of the cotton yester is able to clean the pollution a car emits over a 500-mile drive. 
While cotton yester is an effective super plant, it would be preferably planted in more busy and highly used roads where there is more pollution. And for lesser polluted areas, a combination of shrubbery is recommended. More super plants aside from the Cotoniaster franchetti are being identified by the RHS, combining it with vegetation and revitalizing it for the benefit of wildlife habitats. Early Briones, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. NASA's Perseverance rover has captured its first audio from Mars after a distressing but successful descent on the planet. Ia Devera explains why. The Perseverance rover has shared new images together with its first audio and video of the Red Planet, sharing what they can see and hear on Mars. A video shared by the agency on social media shows the perspective of a spacecraft landing on Mars, starting from the rover entering the Martian atmosphere and ending with the rover touching down the red planet's surface. Ready to begin taking the sands of past life. Also on Rover's Twitter account, the agency shared a brief audio of Mars picked up by one of Rover's microphone, which we can hear a sound of Martian breeze. Aside from latest audio and video from Mars, a panoramic shot where Rover has landed was also uploaded on social media, showing us a wide view presentation of the planet. Thomas Zarbakan, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, expressed how he was moved by this mission. So I believe should become mandatory view for young people who not only want to explore other worlds, and build spacecraft to take them there, but also want to be part of diverse teams achieving all the audacious goals of our future. The Perseverance rover has altogether 23 cameras with video, zoom, and color capabilities, which can produce more footages of iconic visuals of Mars. Ia de Vera, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I'm Stephanie C. live from Hong Kong. Good evening. And those are the reasons behind the news, February 23, 2021. I am Hardin Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.